hello everyone this is an amendment video for november 2022 exams now there have not been many amendments but in some sections there has been major overhaul wide finance act 2021 all these have been made applicable from 1st jan 2022 and as it has been made applicable from 1st jan 2022 these will be applicable for November 2022 exams. This entire amendment we are going to discuss into two parts. The first part will be pages from our textbook. Wherever change was required, that change has been made in that page number and a PDF is available for that particular page. And second is those which couldn't be fitted in the textbook say suppose some circulars issued by cbic those are available in a separate sheet now these two that is pages from the textbook and that separate certain amendment sheet both club together one pdf is available to you i request you to first take the print out of that and only then proceed watching this this is the first page page 13 scope and term of supply now say suppose some of you have been referring to some other textbook of some other author no worries just take a print out of these pages i will exactly tell you where those amendments are you can mark those amendments and this full set can be your amendment sheets yes okay now let's start with the first amendment which has taken place on page number 13 now this page number 13 and page number 13 of your book is same except for the amendment part now how will you find out the amendment the amendment on this page is there in the footnote this particular part in the footnote this is the area where amendment has taken place let me take you through this amendment and thereafter i will make you read this now we have always learnt that association and its members are different any activity carried out by the association for its members would be liable to gst in fact we had read some exemptions also regarding association and members. Let me give you a recall of that. Residential Welfare Association charging maintenance up to 7500 per month per member will enjoy an exemption. We had read this in exemption chapter. Plus certain associations where membership fee is up to 1000 per year that will also enjoy an exemption so we had come across some exemptions for association and its members that means from the beginning of the classes we always recognized association and members as two different persons for gst purpose this was the understanding from the first class now in recent times there was a supreme court judgment on service tax calcutta club where calcutta club argued that association and members are one and the same as they are one and the same there is no question of service tax and supreme court accepted this argument that association and members are same there cannot be a service which is provided by association to its members and this led to a service tax relief for all association and members this was a service tax judgment to be cautious enough what government did is they amended the gst law and said association and members are different persons and association providing services to members or vice versa will be regarded as a supply let me tell you the definition of business 
already included association providing services to members as business but it was not covered by the main section 7 which talks about supply let me give you a small recall three important conditions for gst to apply supply plus consideration and third one being in the course or furtherance of business now if these three conditions are satisfied then gst is applicable on a transaction now they defined this association and members part in the supply portion saying that association providing any service to members or supplying any goods to its members would be liable to gst they amended the definition of supply under section 7 and added this particular point in fact they also added an explanation saying that notwithstanding any act or any judgment association and members are deemed to be distinct persons and any transaction between them is deemed to have been taken place from one person to another so the basic objective of bringing this was not to let gst on such transactions otherwise again after 10 years supreme court would have said that association and members are same there would not be any gst so government before this matter could erupt has provided a complete picture that association and members are different when we read the provision you will see that lot of other things could also get covered in that for example karta huf members huf partnership firm partners they will also be regarded as different person sir but you were only talking about association and members right see i was only talking about association and members this amendment was also brought to cover that but when we read the provisions it says person other than individual to its members or constituents sir constituents meaning the persons who have made that particular organization they are deemed to be different and a supply between these two will be liable to gst let's have a look at the amendment now i will again explain you this particular part again let's see it so page number 13 and this sheet is completely replaceable with your textbook because i have kept the alignment same your page also ends with this particular central government state government or local authority and even the amendment sheet which you have will amend with the same thing i have tried to adjust it in such a way that you don't face any difficulty and you can completely replace page 13 with a new page with the amendment covered let's read it activities or transactions by a person other than individual they are not saying association to members by a person other than individual that means here association can get covered in fact a partnership firm could also get covered i am just writing an example association slash partnership firm to its members or constituents constituents are the persons who have made that organization to its members or constituents members or i can also write partners of the firm or vice versa so whether members are providing to association or association is providing to members for cash deferred payment or other valuable consideration shall be a supply 
so they have included this in the term supply now the word supply is much wider association to its members partnership firm to partners partner to partnership firm members to huf all these will be regarded as a supply sir what about company and shareholders don't worry company and shareholders are distinct persons automatically they are different because of separate legal entity or a llp and partner they are different because of separate legal entity status but here partner and partnership firm were actually not different and now government has clearly said that without any doubt they will be regarded as different let's see further notwithstanding anything contained in any other law or judgment person and its members or constituents shall be deemed to be two separate persons and supply of activities or transactions between them shall be deemed to have been taken place from one to another the basic reason was to overrule the supreme court judgment just to provide a safeguard saying that in future such litigation should not arise in simple terms let me tell you that we were always reading this in gst that association and members gst would be applicable for our exams we used to always read this it's just that now it is clearly provided in the law it clearly says that association and members are different persons any supply or any activity or transaction between these two would be liable to gst obviously if there is a consideration and in the course of business will obviously be satisfied because the definition of business covers this explicitly it is provided specifically in the definition of business let me show you that as well see this e point provision by a club association society or any other member of facilities or benefits to its members here they were talking about club association society but if you see the amendment it is much wider a person other than individual to its members which can cover partnership firm and partners as well so if a partner is providing a service to partnership firm liable to gst partnership firm providing service to partner liable to gst clear great okay now if you see the second page that is page 19 this page 19 same as it is in your textbook now the change is very simple and the change is that this 13th point of classification has been deleted sir what did this 13th point say see it provided classification that if goods are supplied by association to members it would be regarded as supply of goods if goods are supplied by association to members it would be regarded as supply of goods now as it is already included in the main part of definition of supply government felt that there is no need to have this line in the law it is obvious and for that government has deleted this that's the only change this is no more there in schedule 2 sir uh, supply of goods will still be regarded as supply of goods the answer is yes that position does not change okay now now come to page number 84 composition levy we were composition levy was a benefit available to small businesses where they could pay tax at a lower rate on their sales but obviously there were conditions that he cannot collect tax from customers he cannot avail the benefit of input tax credit on purchases he cannot do a interstate supply he cannot supply through an e-commerce operator required to collect tax he cannot supply 
non taxable goods non taxable goods petrol high speed diesel natural gas aviation turbine fuel crude oil alcoholic liquor for human consumption in such cases compositions levy was not available we already read this sir let me tell you there is one point where something additional has been added see you would have written this in your textbook or in your notebook wherever you have written it you will find a point in this called as persons not eligible for composition levy find that point persons not eligible for composition levy now in this persons not eligible for composition levy the first point was any person who is doing a interstate supply if you are carrying out a interstate supply then you are not eligible now one of the points in this was manufacturer the keyword was manufacturer a huh? manufacturer of specified products see a trader is allowed a huh? only a manufacturer of specified goods was not allowed to take composition levy sir what were those goods now pan masala pan masala manufacturer you will give him composition scheme tobacco ice cream which you were always worried about that how can government mention ice cream in this aerated water now till here you have read correct what has been added sir one particular industry has been added bricks and tiles what has been added is bricks and tiles manufacturers of bricks and tiles and let me tell you this bricks and tiles will cover building bricks sir what is building bricks building bricks is red color bricks which you see that is building bricks then you have fly ash bricks what's this fly ash bricks sir fly ash bricks are those bigger gray color bricks you would have seen those gray color bricks slightly bigger in size that's fly ash bricks then bricks of fossil meals left over fossil meals left over bricks and last one is earthen or roofing tiles you understand earthen or roofing tiles see basically it covers tiles which you use at the surface and at the top both would get covered any kind of tiles so basically they have covered every kind of bricks and tiles so a manufacturer of bricks and tiles will not be able to take composition scheme this has been denied by government now the basic reason behind this which we in the industry can see is builders were purchasing bricks from manufacturers and those manufacturers were taking composition scheme benefit sir how does it get an advantage if you recall builders under 94 if they don't purchase 80% of their purchases from registered persons and cement 100% input and input services 80% to be purchased from registered person so they were facing this difficulty that bricks there would be gst element how do we cater to that so what they suggested to their suppliers and manufacturers is you take composition levy the advantage is composition levy the rate would be 1%
and it would qualify to be purchased from registered persons i'll show you an example there is a manufacturer of bricks now this manufacturer of bricks is supplying to a builder this manufacturer of bricks is a registered person under composition so the benefit is he would not be charging tax and 1% he has to pay from pocket that he'll increase it in his sale price now the advantage for the builder was that this used to qualify as a purchase from registered persons and the tax advantage was also there so you got an advantage of tax plus it used to satisfy this condition of purchase from registered persons government said manufacturer of bricks will not be eligible for composition scheme so this is basically what happened in the industry but are you required to know this the answer is no at present you be careful of about one thing that bricks and tiles not eligible for composition levy sir can a trader take this scheme the answer is yes trader of bricks and tiles can take this composition scheme but he would not prefer it reason being if manufacturer is a registered person na he would be charging full tax and the moment he charges full tax i as a trader would have suffered that full tax now if i charge a lower amount i would have to anyways increase my sale price so it was done for the manufacturer not to avail this concessional provision that was the purpose behind this clear correct so for your exams persons not eligible one point i did that is bricks and tiles and all kinds of bricks and tiles are covered you can make a note of this on page 84 okay okay now coming to exemptions come to page number 96 what has changed a very small change yet very significant the impact of this i will again show you in reverse charge mechanism plus i will also show you in e-commerce operator sector now what is the amendment amendment is this part now what was the provision earlier auto whether you take it directly or through an e-commerce operator auto rickshaws enjoyed an exemption metered cab whether you take it from a person directly or through an e-commerce operator that is through ola uber whether you take it directly or through a e-commerce operator metered cab enjoyed an exemption auto rickshaw enjoyed an exemption non ac contract carriage and stage carriage also enjoyed an exemption sir what is contract carriage private buses where normally it is pre booked like bangalore to mumbai mumbai to pune normally pre booked those are contract carriage and stage carriage is public buses which run in the city people get in and step down at each bus stop that's why it is called a stage carriage so non ac contract carriage and non ac stage carriage also enjoyed an exemption whether you take it directly or through e commerce operator like red bus you have come across an app red bus where you can book a bus ticket that enjoyed an exemption if it was non ac contract carriage or stage carriage metered cab auto enjoyed an exemption irrespective of where you take it or from whom you are taking it what's the amendment government has made these things taxable if it is provided through e-commerce operator now understand this clearly if i go to a auto rickshaw take that auto rickshaw ride from him 
GST is not applicable even today. This remains same. But if I take this service through an e-commerce operator, then in that case, e-commerce operator has been made liable to tax. That amendment I will show you in 9.5. First, government removed the exemption from here and then added that in 9.5 saying that e-commerce operator has to pay tax. In simple terms, can I say that if I take a auto rickshaw directly, exempt, if I take a auto rickshaw through Ola app, then in that case, exemption is not available and who is responsible to pay the tax ola is responsible to pay the tax ola being responsible to pay the tax i will show you in rcm and eco chapter but here i am only showing you that amendment which has been made to exemption the exemption is removed for these four categories if it is provided through an e-commerce operator let's have a look at it amendment the exemption is not available for metered cabs auto rickshaw stage and contract carriage provided through this is the keyword people provided through an e-commerce operator required to pay tax under 9.5 so if it is provided through an e-commerce operator who is required to pay tax under 9.5 then the exemption is not available that means the e-commerce operator would be paying gst in such cases ha huh. 9.5 we will discuss it separately but i am sure we are clear with the amendment four sectors one metered cap second auto rickshaw third stage fourth contract carriage see stage and contract carriage ac was already taxable non ac enjoyed an exemption provided some conditions are satisfied now non ac is still exempt huh? But if that non-AC is booked through e-commerce operator, then in that case, GST is applicable. Fair enough. Okay. Now, page number 121. This is your RCM page. Here we would have written about reverse charge mechanism. Now we will have to add certain things in see rcm 93 remains same what has changed as 95 let me tell you what has changed in 95 you will use this page and write with me section 95 of cgst act and 55 of IGST Act. I'll make you write in detail as to what is the provision. You can read this directly instead of the 9555 which you read earlier. The services notified is as follows next line a service by way of transportation of passengers in a radio taxi comma maxi cab comma motor cab 
कॉमा मोटरसाइकिल कॉमा ओमनी बस और एनी अदर मोटर व्हीकल और एनी अदर मोटर व्हीकल सर वी हैव रेड दिस अर्लियर आल्सो लेट मी टेल यू व्हाट इज द चेंज दिस ग्रीन कलर पार्ट इज द चेंज दिस वाज नॉट देयर अर्लियर लेट मी एक्सप्लेन यू दिस रेडियो टैक्सी वाज ऑलरेडी देयर रेडियो टैक्सी इज वेयर जीपीएस टेक्नोलॉजी इज यूज्ड ओला उबर maxi cab more than 6 passenger vehicle but up to 12 passengers motor cab up to 6 passenger vehicle motorcycle you understand omnibus this is basically more than 12 passengers called as omnibus normal buses called as omnibus more than 12 passengers excluding driver ah huh? or any other motor vehicle any other motor vehicle can i write an example autos so can you see that at present if auto is booked through an e-commerce operator who would pay gst e-commerce operator would be liable two amendments to bring this position one the exemption was removed second it was brought under 95 clear okay there are few more entries let me just show you a small example of this then i'll take it forward there's a driver who is providing transportation of passengers to customer through ola what does the law say e commerce operator is liable to pay tax under section 95 i have a question here does it matter whether driver is registered or unregistered the answer is no it does not matter whether the driver is a registered person or unregistered person who is responsible to pay the tax e commerce operator is liable to pay tax under 95 and the moment it is covered under 95 driver is not required to register plus when we talk about tcs tcs under section 52 will not apply if it is covered by 95 sir what is tcs sir when you are selling through flipkart flipkart is required to collect tcs of 1% so that government can track all these transactions but tell me one thing where e commerce operator itself is paying the entire tax on the transaction then will e commerce operator again collect tcs the answer is no clear with this yes okay b you will write with me that diagram is not required but still i'll show you this at the end once i complete two more things b service by way of accommodation in a hotel comma in comma guest house etc except circle except where the supplier of service is liable to register
अंडर सेक्शन ट्वेंटी टू सर्विस बाय वे ऑफ अकोमोडेशन इन अ होटल इन अ बिगर काइंड ऑफ होटल गेस्ट हाउस एक्सेट्रा एक्सेप्ट वेर दी सप्लायर ऑफ सर्विस इज लाइबल टू रजिस्टर अंडर सेक्शन ट्वेंटी टू ना बी वेरी केयरफुल अबाउट दिस सी द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीज टू इफ वी टॉक अबाउट अ होटेल प्रोवाइडिंग सर्विस थ्रू गो आई बी बो टू अ कस्टमर वॉट इज द लॉ से लॉ इज से दैट गो आई बी बो दैट इज ई कॉमर्स ऑपरेटर विल पे जी एस टी only if hotel is not liable to register that means if hotel is a registered person then in that case hotel has to pay tax and what is the service provided accommodation so for this accommodation e-commerce operator is liable only when hotel is unregistered see the difference between the two in the second case if hotel is registered then hotel will pay the tax not the e-commerce operator but in transportation of passengers transportation of passengers e-commerce operator has to pay gst you found the difference between the two yes that means if i take a small example hotel unregistered charging 800 per day through go i bibo can you tell me who will pay the tax let me remind you that up to 1000 per day it enjoys an exemption there is no gst applicable don't forget the exemptions the exemption is available gst would not be applicable in such cases let's see a second example hotel registered person 1200 per day if it was 800 per day then exempt through oyo then hotel will pay the tax is it covered by 95 sir no then it is not covered by 95 then hotel will pay the tax but sir what if hotel is unregistered person because its turnover is below registration limit and it is charging 1200 per day through oyo or go ibbo then oyo is responsible to pay the tax i will make you write these examples once we complete everything but i just wanted to show you these things difference between first scenario visa with second scenario okay now i'll allow you and give you time for this i'll show you this again but let's write the third part and let me tell you b is same as it was there is no amendment in b the amendment was in a this part this part was the amendment but b there is no amendment c again there is no amendment but i'll make you right service by way of housekeeping such as carpentering comma plumbing 
एक्सेट्रा एक्सेप्ट सर्कल एक्सेप्ट वेर दी सप्लायर ऑफ सर्विस इज लायबल टू रजिस्टर अंडर सेक्शन ट्वेंटी टू अगेन सेम प्रोविजन कैन आई से सी इज सिमिलर टू बी यस सी इज सिमिलर टू बी अगेन एग्जाम्पल अर्बन क्लैप हाउस कीपिंग सर्विसेस से सपोज प्लम्बर इज प्रोवाइडिंग सर्विस थ्रू अर्बन क्लैप हु विल बी रेस्पॉन्सिबल टू पे दी टैक्स इन सच केसेस अर्बन क्लैप विल बी रेस्पॉन्सिबल बट इफ दी प्लम्बर turn over is 60 lakh and he is registered then in that case plumber is liable to pay tax so b and c are similar i am just stating here similar provision for housekeeping agreed and only housekeeping are nothing else if anything else is supplied it's not a case of 95 it goes under 91 forward charge okay a ah. a b c a there has been a change b no change c no change d was not there earlier d has been added this is the new entry which has been added very important for your exams market as very important restaurant service except restaurant located in a specified premise specified premise within bracket you'll write specified premise means a premise where the declared tariff sir what is declared tariff declared tariff is basically room rent before discount where the declared tariff of any circle any very important word of any unit of accommodation is more than 7500 per day is more than 7500 per day basically to cover swiggy zomato supply of food restaurant service now a restaurant service e-commerce operator would pay the tax if a restaurant is providing service through swiggy zomato then swiggy zomato will be responsible to pay tax to government see government came up to this with a specific conclusion and that specific conclusion was lot of restaurants are not paying tax and then they made it clear that in such cases the e-commerce operator would be responsible to pay the tax so sir in such cases e-commerce operator pays the tax that means 
restaurant is not required to pay tax no sir what if restaurant is a registered person let me tell you it will not matter sir it doesn't matter whether restaurant is registered or unregistered doesn't matter e-commerce operator will pay the tax that means can i say this d is similar to a there is only one exception in d which i will explain you in a while but i am writing something here and what i am writing is similar provision for restaurant service similar provision for restaurant service so at present restaurant and transportation of passengers are one category accommodation and housekeeping is one category but restaurant has one exception where restaurant will only pay the tax a restaurant located within taj will pay tax under forward charge do you agree that taj hotel a unit of accommodation a room charge will be more than 7500 yes let's have a look see this carefully restaurant service except so entire restaurant industry is covered under 95 except where restaurant is located in a specified premise so if it is located in a specified premise 95 will not apply specified premise means a premise where declared tariff that is room rent before discount of any unit of accommodation any uh, even a single room more than 7500 accommodation that's sufficient is more than rupees 7500 per day then in that case that restaurant will pay tax under forward charge because it is excluded from 95 let's take some examples of all these together let's see what you do we'll write some examples i will give you the case you will have to tell me or you will have to think at your place who will pay the tax have two columns case and second column who will pay tax to government let's see whether you are able to identify whether it's a case of 91 that is forward charge or it's a case of 95 that is e-commerce operator responsible to pay tax first one restaurant in Taj hotel through Swiggy room rent fifteen thousand per day. Whether Swiggy will pay the tax or Taj, and the winning answer is Taj will pay the tax. That is the restaurant. Sir, if restaurant is owned by a third party, then that third party restaurant. Because any restaurant which is located in Taj, that will not get covered under 95. It will fall under 91. So you can write 91 forward charge. Second one restaurant within bracket registered person through swiggy any nearby restaurant near you which is registered but you are ordering through swiggy you did not go there you ordered through swiggy who will pay the tax sir swiggy will pay the tax not the restaurant sir third one restaurant unregistered person 
थ्रू स्विगी अगेन द आंसर विल बी स्विगी यू नीड टू बी केयरफुल अबाउट वन थिंग वॉट वन थिंग सर ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ पैसेंजर एंड रेस्टोरेंट वी डोंट चेक वेदर इट इज रजिस्टर्ड एंड रजिस्टर्ड बट अकोमोडेशन एंड हाउस कीपिंग वी चेक दैट आई गिव यू अ सिंपल फॉर्मूला यू कैन रिमेंबर दिस एज हैट आर housekeeping accommodation transportation of passengers and restaurant and the best part about this hatar is h and a you have to check whether registered and registered but t and r don't check registered or unregistered e-commerce operator will only pay the tax let's see some more examples then if you want you can note down this fourth one accommodation within bracket you'll write registered person through oyo 1200 per day and the winning answer would be who will pay the tax the supplier will pay the tax 91 and here you can write this is 95 this is also 95 see accommodation the moment it is provided by a registered person registered person will pay the tax fifth one accommodation unregistered person through oyo 1200 per day oyo will pay the tax Nine five. Then driver through Ola. Who will pay the tax, people? See, driver through Ola. Ola will pay the tax under nine five. Ah, last one is the most important one. I expect. institute to ask you question on this if the question paper is difficult neeta buses neeta buses very famous in mumbai area maharashtra neeta buses registered person non ac contract carriage through red bus i will pause for 10 seconds you think of an answer and the winning answer is red bus 95 sir this is exempt na non ac contract carriage no i told you when non ac contract carriage is supplied through a e-commerce operator the exemption has been removed we just discussed it the exemption has been removed and now this is part of 95 red bus will pay it is transportation of passengers you will not check whether registered or unregistered remember for these two you check whether it is registered and registered if it is registered and registered the taxability will vary accordingly but transportation and restaurant don't check registered and registered in restaurant just be careful of one big hotel 
restaurant in that restaurant will pay the tax clear okay i'll just show you this entire thing once if you need anything everything is there on your screen say suppose you later wish to write this somewhere in your notebook you can go ahead and write it or this one this example was there or this entire 95 part i leave it to your discretion so two amendments which we discussed in this one was this one where transportation of passengers the scope is widened and second one a new entry added that is restaurant these were the two amendments but while discussing these two i have just tried to cover entire ambit so that you are very confident on 9555 clear okay come forward next page is page 137 very small amendment now see you remember 40 lakh limit is applicable if you are only supplying goods i'll just give you a background if you are only supplying goods then in that case 40 lakh limit is applicable and if you are supplying goods plus services then 20 lakh limit is applicable correct and if you are supplying goods and you are earning interest still you will get 40 lakh limit this is is interest on loans deposits advances again you will be eligible for 40 lakh but this 40 lakh limit is not applicable for 10 states must up and mtnm meghalaya arunachal pradesh sikkim telangana uttarakhand puducherry and mtnm manipur tripura nagaland mizoram because here the limit is 20 lakh and here the limit is 10 lakh correct now there are some more cases who don't get 40 lakh so 40 lakh limit is not applicable for a person who is engaged in supply of pan masala people person engaged in supply of pan masala whether manufacturer or whether trader doesn't matter person who is supplying pan masala as a manufacturer or trader will not get 40 lakh limit for him 20 lakh will apply and if he is in 10 states then to anyways he doesn't get pan masala even if he is supplying in maharashtra or karnataka still he will not get 40 lakh limit fine sir then you have tobacco cigarette cigar etc then you had ice cream this you already know what has been added sir the amendment is this fourth one bricks and tiles oh yes bricks and tiles so a person who is supplying bricks and tiles will he get 40 lakh limit the answer is no he will not be eligible for 40 lakh limit that means what limit will apply to him 20 or 10 as the case may be okay let's see this sir where is the change on this page i'll show you the change is only this part that's it the green part which you can see only this part everything else remains same only this part fly ash bricks that is gray color bricks bricks of fossil meals left over building bricks red color bricks and earthen or roofing tiles basically bricks and tiles have been added in this that's the only change sir yes so 40 lakh limit is not applicable for pan masala ice cream 
aerated water is missing here be careful don't add aerated water because aerated water is there in composition scheme but not there here here only these four are there and it's given here pan masala ice cream tobacco fly ash bricks bricks and tiles have been newly added this is the amendment part okay that's the only amendment in this page then come to uh, page 143 very small change you remember revocation of cancellation revocation of cancellation is where officer has suomoto cancelled your registration such person can apply for revocation of cancellation last attempt the amendment was he will get 30 days plus additional 30 days plus additional 30 days as may be approved by the officers now what has been added the addition is only this much Aadhaar authentication is mandatory for revocation is it sir yes a person who is applying for revocation his Aadhaar has to be authenticated in case of sole proprietor proprietor partnership firm any authorized partner company authorized director their Aadhaar should be authenticated and what is authentication you will receive a link on your email click on that link enter Aadhaar number enter OTP which you receive on mobile Aadhaar is authenticated sir if I don't have Aadhaar sir then apply for Aadhaar and you will get an enrollment number at present you can put that enrollment number and the moment you get the Aadhaar authenticate Aadhaar is it sir yes so this has been added in fact this is there at two places Aadhaar authentication have been made mandatory for two class of persons who sir revocation of cancellation filers second refund application filers so these two categories have to authenticate Aadhaar otherwise they will not be able to file their application of refund and revocation application these two categories mandatory other authentication refund amendment i will teach you in some time clear great ah come to page 159 again a very small amendment people very small page 159 you remember e invoicing which is required for b2b invoices and exports yes b2b invoices and exports require e invoicing small businesses were not required to carry out e invoicing big businesses e invoicing required how was big business defined big business was defined where in any of the preceding financial year starting from 1718 your turnover was more than 50 crore rupees then in that case e invoicing was applicable in any of the preceding financial years starting from 1718 if your aggregate turnover was more than 50 crore then e invoicing is applicable government has widened the scope of e invoicing this 50 crore has now become 20 crore not exactly 20 crore more than 20 crore in any preceding financial year starting from 1718 so even for one preceding financial year if your turnover was more than 20 crore then you are required to generate e invoice and you know if you don't generate e invoice when you are required to then it will not be treated as an invoice and if it is not treated as an invoice na your recipient will not get itc obviously na people one of the conditions to take itc is you should be in possession of an invoice clear small change yet significant change where is the change sir this one amendment what is the change sir 20 crores 
earlier this was 50 crores now it has been made 20 crores yes this has come recently 1st april 2022 now not required to remember the dates still i am giving you the date 1st april with effect from 1st april 22 exceeds 20 crore then in that case you are required to generate e invoice ha huh. dynamic qr code limit remains same 500 crores dynamic qr code is required only on b to c invoices and what is dynamic qr code sir b to c invoices should have a dynamic qr code so that the customer can scan and pay directly without entering the amount so if your bill amount is 1000 rupees there will be a dynamic qr code you will scan that you don't have to enter that 1000 rupees directly you can make the payment that's dynamic qr code that is applicable only when in any preceding financial year starting from 1718 your turnover was more than 500 crores that limit remains same okay so only changes this part then then come to page 165 very small change very small I mean sometimes we fail to realize that a change has happened that small it is GSTR 1 what's the change sir this part I have a basic question for you if you have not filed your 3b then government has not got taxes correct sir because government gets taxes through gstr 3b correct sir lot of people were filing gstr 1 reporting supplies but not filing 3b and not paying taxes government provided that if you have not filed 3b for previous month or quarter then you cannot file gstr1 sir this was there earlier also let me tell you what was earlier earlier it was previous two months this two has been deleted that's the change the change is so small earlier it was previous two months now it has been made previous month see there were two things for a normal person previous two months slash quarter and for a person covered by rule 86 b where one percent you have to pay through e cash ledger if you are covered in that there it was previous tax period that is previous month or quarter now there is consistency for everyone if you have not filed 3b for one month or one quarter then you will not be allowed to file gstr1 simple if you have not filed previous month or quarter 3b then you cannot file gstr1 slash iff what is iff sir invoice furnishing facility where you can furnish b2b invoices clear okay small change important for mcq huh? okay then coming to page 211 now these are some provisions related to adjudication and offenses penalties assessment these changes i will give you a background of all these and i will also sum up these changes while discussing 129 and 130 very important section major overhaul has been done to section 129 and 130 sir what it is sir just wait for some time you will find in other places also you will find this 129 130 but i will tell you that in some time okay now let me take a small example if mr a has done a crime fine sir and this is mr t who is the transporter government officer has catched both the persons mr a who has done the main crime mr t 
हु हैज सपोर्टेड द क्रिमिनल गवर्नमेंट हैज कॉट बोथ नाउ नाउ से सपोज मिस्टर ए इज एबल टू प्रूव दैट ही इज जेन्युन then in that case my question to you is if mr a is able to prove that he is genuine will the proceedings against mr t hold good the answer is no the proceedings against both the persons will come to an end because section 75 provided for a particular point that connected persons proceedings will come to an end if main proceedings has come to an end who had done the crime mr a if he is able to prove that i have not done any crime then automatically the proceedings against t will also come to an end is it sir yes but earlier this was a open ended section that was applicable for any case in any circumstance if the proceedings against main person has come to an end then the connected proceedings is also come to an end what is the change sir government has removed these two things section 129 and 130 sir tell us sir what is 129 and 130 129 is penalty for cases caught during transit a vehicle was moving e way bill is missing or invoice is missing officer will hold those goods and penalty is applicable now the relief to connected person will not be available in 129 and 130 cases that means if a truck is carrying goods without e way bill and those goods are caught proceedings can be initiated for the person who is the owner of the goods as well as the truck owner independently if one person is proven not guilty the other person's proceeding can still continue there will not be a relief to the other person what was the provision earlier provision earlier was if main person gets a relief then connected person also gets a relief this provision is still active except for cases of 129 and 130 so 129 you can just write penalty during transit and 130 is confiscation of goods confiscation of goods we will come across these two provisions in this itself because as i told you both the provisions have been completely modified is it sir yes okay so this was one small change so you can mark this as an amendment what is the amendment sir 129 and 130 is removed so the relief to connected persons will not be available for 129 and 130 proceedings okay the second change is this this explanation on the same page ah uh, 211 mark this as amendment okay let me explain you this people section 75 also provided one point that amount of self assessed tax or interest remaining unpaid can be recovered directly without a show cause notice or demand order what does the provision say self assessed tax the tax which you are declaring yourself or any interest can be recovered directly from such person without issuing show cause notice or demand order this provision was already there what is the amendment sir they have added a line 
as to what is self assessed tax self assessed tax includes details furnished in gstr 1 not reported in gstr 3b hmm includes details furnished in gstr 1 not reported in 3b i'll give you an example gstr 1 you reported a turnover of 100 rupees gst 18 rupees people when you report your gstr 1 and it is available to the other person that is your recipient in gstr 2b the other person can take itc gstr 1 you report your recipient can take itc based on his 2b agreed people so gstr 1 you have reported that means the other person can take itc if he is registered now what did i do i reported 100 in gstr 1 but while paying taxes i made it 10 and paid only 1 rupee 80 paise as taxes smart sir ha ah, really smart now government will come up and recover directly without issuing show cause notice can you see i have short paid tax of 16.2 rupees gstr1 i reported 100 gstr 3b i paid tax of 1.8 there is a shortfall of 16.2 this 16.2 can be recovered without show cause notice or demand order direct recovery sir yes direct recovery can be initiated because government is saying this is nothing but self assessed tax you had only said na that your tax is 18 then how come you paid 1.8 now suffer clear all this has been done for those who were trying to play smart government showed them that they are smarter fine sir okay so you'll mark this as an amendment that if you have reported something as gstr1 and not reported in 3b recovery can be directly initiated mark it as very important for case study type questions they can ask you in a mcq based case study or a normal case study question four marks and the answer will be very simple but at that point of time you need to recall this one line one line in the law okay now next is page 213 again a very small change what is the change sir change is from here and this part now let me give you some background on this example huh? i have evaded tax fine sir can department recover by selling my movable and immobile property sir obviously they can do it fine simple case i have evaded tax i would be liable to pay tax department can recover by selling my movable and immobile property fine sir what has been added now department can do this even for recovery of penalty under 12930 sir what is this section 129 i told you we are going to discuss it in detail major overhaul taken place in 129 if i am liable to pay penalty under 129 that is goods were moving during transit and documentation was not correct then penalty under 129 is applicable department can initiate this proceeding even for recovery under section penalty under 129 that's one addition now first after selling the property na whatever money government gets they will first use it for administrative cost for recovery process 
to entire run the entire recovery process whatever was the expenditure auction or expenditure setup expenditure forms etc that would be the first thing then next it will be appropriated against the amount to be recovered or penalty under 12093 amount to be recovered or penalty under 123 so this penalty under 123 is added next any other amount due from the defaulter under cgst act sgst act utgst act or anything else any balance left will be credited to e cash ledger of the registered person if he has a registration it will be credited to e cash ledger or it will be transferred to bank account if he is unregistered till here we are clear what if the person is not there say suppose i evaded tax example i evaded tax and now i run to dubai then in that case my property is sold if there is some left out amount what will happen to that sir government will come to dubai and credit it to your bank account in dubai see the point if it is not possible to credit in 6 months from the date of sale or such further period as po proper officer may allow such balances will be transferred to consumer welfare fund government will eat away sir so if they are not able to transfer within 6 months or further period as may be extended by proper officer then the amount shall be credited to consumer welfare fund this point has been added this is a new point clear so mark this this is the only change on page 213 recovery movable and immobile property this comes through a rule that rule has been amended and that's why we have added it here okay then you have page 215 provisional attachment sir what is this provisional attachment now provisional attachment is say suppose show cause notice is issued do you agree that show cause notice then i will reply personal hearing then order will be passed it takes a lot of time from show cause notice to order department is scared that this person might run away or sell his property to someone else so government had come up with a scheme called as provisional attachment where they will attach the property provisionally see remember one thing during this na during the pendency of proceedings recovery cannot be initiated recovery cannot be initiated only after this order after giving 30 days time that's when recovery can start correct now here provisional attachment is during the pendency of proceedings sir we know this see this was already there but now department can provisionally attach even here see the difference sir before show cause notice they can provisionally attach this is very harsh sir welcome to the amended gst law earlier provisional attachment could be done during the pendency of 7374 that means during the pendency of show cause notice to demand order notice is issued demand order it will take time so i will provisionally attach now they can provisionally attach even before show cause notice in some cases at present it can be done even during audit let me show you the provision see this see the change is very small but the impact is very big huh? see this where after initiation of any proceeding see how wide it is after initiation of any proceedings under assessment 59 to 64 all section cover inspection search seizure demand recovery any of these points provisional attachment can start 
if they have started inspection they can provisionally attach if they have started search they can provisionally attach if they have started proceeding under summary assessment they can start if they have just given the audit notice and thereafter they do a best judgment assessment then proceedings can start because 59 to 64 all the points are covered not specifically audit but 59 to 64 59 to 64 will cover scrutiny of returns will cover provisional assessment will cover best judgment assessment two cases non-filers of return and unregistered person will cover provisional uh, summary assessment all these will lead to provisional assess attachment that means the power of officers has been widened earlier it was for 73 and 74 now it has the wide ambit has been widened and then it says the commissioner you mark this entire pages amendment who will give the approval for provisional attachment commissioner for protecting the interest of the government may by order in writing attach provisionally any property including bank account belonging to taxable person or any person specified in 122 1a again this 122 1a was added last attempt what is this 122 1a sir now this person has evaded tax I am a chartered accountant who has encouraged him who has helped him and I have retained the benefit of this transaction to certain extent I helped him to execute all these fake transactions he has evaded tax can penalty be applied on him the answer is yes can penalty be initiated on me chartered accountant the answer is yes earlier penalty on a chartered accountant could be 25,000 maximum CGST CSGST 25,000 but now government had added 122 1a 122 1a provided that such person who has helped this person and who retains the benefit of this transaction penalty can be up to the tax amount evaded that means can penalty be applicable on this person as well as on the chartered accountant the answer is yes can the property of this person be attached the answer is yes can my property also be attached the answer is yes provisional attachment will be applicable not just on the taxable person but also on the person specified under 122 1a and what is this 122 1a sir 122 1a is that connected person who was retaining the benefit of such transactions like for example fake itc cases where i helped him to take fake itc clear okay time period remains same it will be valid for one year order would be passed and it would be shared with the registrar or if vehicle is attached then to the vehicle registrar hazardous or perishable properties can be released on payment of market price of the property or amount that is payable whichever is lower where such person fails to pay such amount then the goods may be sold and it would be adjusted this is same objection yes you can file an objection against provisional attachment saying that it's a genuine case and i have already filed a case against this so please don't provisionally attach it that remains same this is just the definition of adjudicating authority where nothing has changed so basic change one the scope widened scope And second is at present this can be applied on the taxable person as well as person covered under 122 1a.
earlier it could be initiated only few few specific cases during the pendency of the adjudication proceedings now during assessment it can be done inspection search seizure demand recovery at any given point of time very wide ambit of provisional attachment of property okay now you will come to page 221 again a very small change on page 221 but you will mark it as very important now here i have given you that as an amendment this is the amendment okay now let me give you a background see do you agree that whenever you are filing a appeal you are seeking justice and to seek that justice government wants us to make some pre deposit is it sir yes obviously what is the pre deposit sir see let me first tell you how does the process work say suppose additional commissioner or joint commissioner has passed an order now when additional commissioner or joint commissioner has passed an order you will go to commissioner appeal this is called as appellate authority from commissioner appeal you will go to appellate tribunal depending on whether it is a national bench matter that is place of supply other than place of supply will go to state bench from appellate tribunal you will go to high court and high court to supreme court but if it is a matter of place of supply then directly from here to here because that is heard by national bench that will directly go to supreme court this is the process in simple terms i have showed you the process now this is called as first level of appeal this is called as second level of appeal high court supreme court come from code of civil procedures so high court supreme court gst law cannot give instruction how much should be the pre deposit gst law can give instructions only to those appeal mechanisms which are initiated within the law and those are basically from this particular gst law like commissioner appeal in gst comes from gst law tribunal under gst comes from gst law high court does not come from gst law so first level and second level there is a pre deposit how much sir pre deposit at first level is admitted liability plus 10% of tax in dispute whatever you admit that you have to pay plus 10% of the tax careful with the words admitted liability admitted liability will include tax interest penalty but if you see here it says 10% of tax in dispute that means not interest and penalty second level second level admitted liability plus additional 20% of tax in dispute okay sir if you see a matter which is being disputed you have to pay pre deposit only of the tax amount not of the interest and penalty agreed provision is simple this was there earlier also you basically pay pre deposit of disputed tax correct yes now certain proceedings under 129 what is 129 sir 129 is penalty for goods being carried without proper documentation penalty for goods in transit 
if you are filing an appeal for this then no pre deposit this was the scenario why no pre deposit sir because the law said disputed tax in 129 what is in dispute penalty is in dispute so if you read the provision the pre deposit for 129 cases will be zero but how can you go to seek justice without depositing anything and government therefore brought a change what is that change sir the change is if you are going for appeal against penalty then you have to deposit 25% of penalty obviously it is subject to the maximum amount of 25 crores in first level second level nothing is mentioned only for first appeal you have to deposit 25% of penalty so penalty is 10 lakh you have to deposit 25% of penalty as pre deposit to fight a case of 129 are you clear with this the next discussion is 129 we'll get lot of clarity i will again discuss this point while discussing 129 but let's have a look and i'm sure you are clear on this this remains same huh? nothing has changed what has changed is in a 129 penalty case when you are filing an appeal you earlier law if it was as it is pre deposit would not be required but now government has set 25% of the penalty let's see it what's the amendment pre deposit people amendment is only to first level you write it here better ha huh? it's given here but you write it here first level pre deposit for an appeal against an order under 12293 shall be equal to 25% of penalty and this is given on page 233 which is our next discussion 129 that's what we are going to discuss next but amendment is clear to you if you are filing an appeal for 129 case then you have to deposit 25% of the penalty sir is this 25% of penalty required in any other penalties of 122 123 124 125 the answer is no for all other cases 25% will not apply only for 129 penalty because there the disputed matter is only penalty clear okay i'll give you example on this based on this provision now coming to section 129 you write it as very important page 2 Thirty-three, two thirty-three, right? Ah, page two thirty-three, and here you will write amendment entire page because entire provision has been overhauled. One twenty-nine and one thirty, entire provision overhauled. Let's see. First, let me explain you. Say suppose. this is a truck without invoice and e-way bill so a truck is moving without invoice without e-way bill this is the proper officer proper officer stops the truck obviously it is not carrying proper documents what will happen the truck will be first detained and the moment it is detained detained meaning it would be stopped and it will not be allowed to move further the moment it is detained thereafter a notice will be issued 
who will issue sir proper officer you get 7 days time to reply if you don't reply or your reply is not satisfactory or he has released the goods in all cases order will be passed by proper officer so notice time 7 days order has to be passed within 7 days fine sir now what will this order contain this is a order for payment of penalty sir what if i don't pay the penalty i will come to that but first let's see what is the penalty see it very carefully ha yeah? penalty there can be two cases where person comes forward see it was my goods and i come forward saying that i take the responsibility goods were being supplied without invoice and e way bill but now i want to release the goods then such person is required to pay penalty which is 200% of tax Two hundred percent of tax. This is the penalty, sir. Say suppose the GST was five lakh, then the penalty will be ten lakh. If GST was five lakh, penalty will be ten lakh. And if you want to file an appeal against this order, sir, if I want to file an appeal against this order. i will have to pay 25% as pre deposit ah we just learned correct okay second is where person does not come forward see does not come forward can be two cases either we are not aware of who he is or he was caught in enquiry he did not come himself he did not say that i am the owner of the goods he was hiding and the officer caught him that can be one case or second it was not found we did not realize whose goods these were that's called as where the person does not come forward obviously here the penalty will be higher penalty will be 50% of value or 200% of tax whichever is higher 50% of value or 200% of tax whichever is higher now let me show you this with a small example say suppose value of the goods is 10 lakh cgst Ninety thousand, that is nine percent, and SGST ninety thousand. Any problem? No, sir. IGST eighteen percent, one lakh eighty. Fine, sir. Now, now we are reading one twenty nine of CGST Act. Let me tell you one thing, and then I will prove you. Fifty percent of value, you will have to double it for IGST. But two hundred percent of tax, you will not double because tax already gets doubled. Ah, sir, again, again, again. Fifty percent of value, you will have to double it for IGST. I will prove it to you. Two hundred percent of tax, don't double it for IGST because tax will already get doubled. i will show you this by cgst sgst i will show you this now say suppose we create two cases comes forward and second case is does not come forward if he comes forward cgst penalty will be 
200% of tax people 200% of tax 200% of 90000 will be 180000 do you agree and sgst again penalty will be 200% of tax 200% of 90000 will be 180 so do you agree that the total penalty will be 360000 if he comes forward correct no problem if he does not come forward let's do the calculation for cgst cgst 50 percent of value or 200 percent of tax see 50 percent of value will be 5 lakh sir how did you get that a value is 10 lakh na 50 percent of this 5 lakh 5 lakh or 1.8 lakh whichever is higher which is higher sir 5 lakh is higher do you agree that if he does not come forward penalty under cgst law will be 5 lakh because 5 lakh is higher under sgst sir do the same thing 50 percent of value or 200 percent of tax whichever is higher so 5 lakh or 1.8 lakh 5 lakh is higher sir so the total penalty will be 10 lakh do you agree with this so remember when we are saying 50 percent of value we actually mean 100 percent of value cgst and sgst taken together ah that means government will eat away everything as penalty sir tax we have to pay on this obviously people that is separate this is only penalty are you clear with this so i am giving you a small thing to remember and i would request you in your notebook now somewhere you copy this because this penalty has to be paid within 15 days from the order if you don't pay it officer will start recovery proceedings by selling these goods oh he'll get it auctioned sir yes you get it auctioned now you have to write this entire thing pause the video and write it but i'll give you one small thing whenever it is a percentage of tax don't double it for igst percentage of tax huh? whenever it's a percentage of tax whenever it's amount double for igst like this was an amount sir 50 percent of value was an amount yes 50 percent of value is an amount because it's not tax it will not double by itself in igst did you understand this this logic will help you throughout entire idt law percentage of tax don't double it for igst amount double it for igst you can pause the video write this entire thing then we will read the provision really important for exams okay now let's read the provision notwithstanding anything contained in this act where any person transports any goods or stores any goods while they are in transit this is the key point huh? this can apply only when goods are in transit huh? not when goods are in your premise in contravention to the provisions of this act or rules made there under all such goods and conveyance not just goods conveyance will also be caught used as means of transport for carrying the said goods and documents relating to goods and conveyance shall be liable to detention or seizure officer will stop those goods the goods and conveyance after detention shall be released when will it be released case 
and payment for release. Let's see case. Let's see payment. Where the owner of the goods comes forward for payment of penalty. How much is the penalty, sir? On payment of penalty equal to 200% of tax payable on such goods or furnishing security of amount equivalent furnishing security bank guarantee you can give a bank guarantee of that amount 200% of tax payable exempted goods ha huh, there is no change in exempted goods provision it is same exempted goods it is lower amount equal to 2% of value or 25000 whichever is lower or furnishing security circle this lower this is same huh? prior to amendment after amendment this is same what has changed is this earlier you used to pay tax and 100% of tax as penalty now 200% of penalty direct double sir direct double where the owner does not come forward if he does not come forward penalty equal to 50% of the value or 200% of tax whichever is higher 50% of value double it double it double it for IGST or furnishing security of the amount payable above note in case of exempted goods 5% of value or 25,000 whichever is lower this remains same as it is earlier no such goods shall be detained or seized without serving an order of detention or seizure on the person transporting the goods the above release shall be made on provisional basis on payment of penalty or furnishing security ha. goods will be provisionally released and let me tell you goods once provisionally released as a matter of practice are never detained again Ha, they can do a recovery that is different but they will not be detained again 129.3 the proper officer detaining such goods shall issue a notice within 7 days of detention specifying the penalty payable within 7 days he has to issue a notice thereafter he will pass an order within 7 days from service of notice for payment of penalty Opportunity is given obviously 7 days time is given to you between serving of notice and passing of order. On payment of above penalty all proceedings in the notice are deemed to be completed. Is it sir? Yes. If you pay the penalty government's job is done because they have got the money. Where person transporting any goods or the owner of the goods fails to pay the amount of tax and penalty within 15 days of such detention or seizure see here detention of seizure 15 days will start from receipt of order which order sir here this order this order from this order 15 days time you get to pay this and if we don't pay recovery shall be initiated recovery proceedings and one procedure is given i will show you that's also an amendment where the detained or seized goods are perishable or hazardous or are likely to depreciate in value then 15 days may be reduced by po for perishable goods they might reduce 15 days to a much lower number ah this is new completely new market is important for mcq the conveyance shall be released on payment of penalty under 129 or 1 lakh whichever is less thank god they said whichever is less by the transporter sir transporter is also liable sir if transporter is carrying goods without these documents transporter will be liable to additional see normal person has to pay 200 percent of penalty transporter has to pay 200 percent of penalty or 1 lakh whichever is lower obviously whichever is lower people otherwise transporter will leave the truck 
imagine imagine transporter has to pay this penalty of 10 lakh 10 lakh or 1 lakh whichever is lower because otherwise the truck value will not be that much people after depreciation so government has that's why said penalty under 129 or 1 lakh whichever is less market is important for mcq okay this circular remains same what's the circular sir very simple circular say suppose a truck is carrying goods 25 different consignments five did not have eva bill how many consignments will be seized sir 25 consignments five did not have eva bill five will be detained balance will be left ah, five will be detained and the truck will also be detained is it sir obviously now we were truck will also be detained because truck will be released only on payment of 129 penalty or 1 lakh whichever is lower that's what this circular said again important if 5 goods did not 5 consignments did not have it then only those 5 consignments will be held okay coming to another very small discussion confiscation here I will show you one example also. People, earlier section 130 started like this. It said notwithstanding anything contained in any other provision. This is how it started. Now this word notwithstanding has gone. Because the dispute was which is stronger? 129 is stronger or 130 is stronger? Now government has delinked it. 129 is a separate proceeding. Confiscation is a separate proceeding. None of these two will be held attached to each other. Both are separate proceedings. So sir, on one consignment both things can happen. The answer is yes. There can be a 129 proceeding as well as a 130 proceeding. Both will be considered as valid. 129 is penalty 130 is confiscation let me tell you 130 is wider 130 can take place in many other cases wherever there was an intention to evade tax and the second difference is 129 is only during transit but 130 can be if a person has not taken registration when he was liable to register or he has contravened any provision with an intent to evade tax or does not account for the goods which he has say suppose this is a very common thing he has stock worth 15 lakh but in books 7 lakh ah sir this happens normally it's a case of confiscation people is it sir let's say where any person supplies or receives goods in contravention of any provisions of this act with an intent to evade tax does not account for any goods which he is liable to pay tax under this act supplies goods without applying for registration when he was liable to register or contravenes any provisions with an intent to evade tax very wide so it can happen during inspection search seizure any case confiscation can happen then all such goods and conveyance shall be liable to confiscation and the person will be liable to penalty under 122 sir how much is the penalty under 122 penalty under 122 is 100% of the tax if it is fraud case if it's a fraud case sir it has to be a fraud case 100% reason I'll tell you can you see this with an intent to evade tax 
liable to pay tax this is what you get fraud case penalty is 100% of tax fraud willful misstatement suppression of facts and other than fraud the penalty is 10% of tax that's the variation now see confiscation means government becomes the owner of the goods is it sir yesterday it was my goods today government has become the owner that is basically confiscation now careful about one thing before confiscating na option to pay redemption fine is given this is same as earlier for maximum but minimum has changed is it sir yes the amendment are in two parts here one this is an amendment part and second is this these are the two areas where amendment has happened let me take you through it option to pay redemption fine the officer at judging it shall give obviously mandatory officer has to give an option to the owner to pay in lieu of confiscation we will return you the goods you pay redemption fine how much sir as he deems fit subject to here you can write this is maximum and this is minimum maximum is same minimum has changed minimum earlier the language was slightly complicated now they have made it easy is it sir ha when you compare it with what you have studied earlier versus now the provision today is easier the amount of fine shall not exceed market value of the goods less tax chargeable thereon this is same i'll give you an example minimum aggregate of fine and penalty levyable penalty levyable under section 122 shall not be less than penalty equal to 100% of tax payable i will prove you that normally minimum will result into zero ha huh? minimum will be zero sir yes i will show it to you fine for owner of the conveyance will be equal to the tax payable on the goods being transported this is for the vehicle redemption fine for releasing the vehicle now let's take an example you will write with me value of goods 10 lakh tax 1.8 lakh person not paying tax with an intent to evade tax calculate maximum and minimum redemption fine let's see now what will be the maximum redemption fine market value of the goods minus tax chargeable how much is the market value 10 lakh sir minus 1.8 lakh 8.2 lakh is the maximum redemption fine and what would be the minimum redemption fine sir let me show you this you concentrate then you can pause the video and write very important see what is the language fine plus penalty under 122 shall not be less than penalty equal to 100% of tax payable let's see fine that is redemption fine 
प्लस पेनल्टी अंडर सेक्शन 122 शाल नॉट बी लेस देन 100 परसेंट ऑफ टैक्स करेक्ट फाइन प्लस पेनल्टी अंडर सेक्शन 122 शाल नॉट बी लेस देन 100 परसेंट ऑफ टैक्स नाउ फाइन प्लस पेनल्टी अंडर सेक्शन 122 फॉर सच केसेस विल बी 100 परसेंट ऑफ टैक्स इज इट सर हा because it's a case of tax evasion if it was not a case of tax evasion then this would have been 10% of tax because that's the penalty shall not be less than 100% of tax now we will these two will get cancelled eighth standard mathematics 100% of tax lhs rhs both the sides it will get cancelled so fine shall not be less than zero minimum redemption fine for all tax evaders is zero why sir because he has already paid penalty under 122 which was 100% of tax if he has already paid penalty under 122 minimum should be zero because he has already suffered that penalty and maximum is to the extent of market price of the goods less tax because tax he has already paid that's how they have framed maximum and minimum sir but if uh, we are calculating for a person who is not a fraud normally 130 is not initiated for other than fraud cases but if it is initiated for other than fraud cases then penalty under 122 will be 10% now here you have 100% here you have 10% so fine shall not be less than 90% of the tax because 100 minus 10 will get you 90% clear with this yes now you can pause it and you can write this particular example here important for examination you can get a case study based question on this maximum and minimum okay okay now page 238 this 11th point is an amendment entire process added very simple process we will if i was transporting goods without eva bill or invoice penalty under 129 is applicable which you just saw that penalty under 129 is applicable officer will pass a order after notice after order if i don't pay within 15 days then officer can sell the goods and recover money that process of selling the goods is defined under rule 144a so 144a has defined the process of selling those goods let's see where a person fails to pay penalty under 129 within 15 days from the date of receipt of order copy the po shall proceed for sale or disposal of goods or conveyance by preparing an inventory and estimating market value of such goods or conveyance if goods are perishable or likely to depreciate in value with passage of time 15 days will be reduced by po in fact you will hear this line after every sentence matlab wherever the time limit is given na you will find this what is this sir if proper officer thinks that it is perishable hazardous or it will depreciate in value i mean as you understand 
most of the goods will depreciate in value except for few precious stones etc most of the goods will depreciate in value so i think government has given wide powers that in any case officer if he wants he can reduce the time the said goods or conveyance shall be sold through a process of auction okay for which notice will be issued in form gst drc 10 indicating the goods or conveyance to be sold and the purpose of sale auction or each auction notice will be issued to the general public where the person transporting such goods or the owner pays the amount of penalty including expenses for safe custody or handling of such goods after 15 days but before issuance of above notice before a notice is issued but after 15 days see 15 days is the initial time given then we will take time to conduct auction before we issue the notice for auction if he has paid it then po shall cancel the process of auction and release such goods is it sir yes then the goods will be released okay the last day of submission of the bid or date of auction shall not be earlier than 15 days from the notice 15 days to receive bids but again you'll find this if it is perishable hazardous or depreciate in value po may reduce it for some other period po will specify the pre-bid deposit you understand pre-bid deposit some amount you have to pay to be eligible to make a bid to be furnished or to make the bidders eligible to participate in the auction which may be returned to unsuccessful bidders or forfeited in case successful bidders fail to make payment of full amount it's simple english if i have failed to pay the amount after bidding for it then pre-deposit amount will not be given back to me po shall issue a notice to successful bidder requiring him to make payment within 15 days from date of auction again you'll find the same point 15 days may be reduced by po Throughout you will find 15 days point. On payment of full bid amount, PO shall transfer the possession or ownership of the said goods or conveyance to the successful bidder. PO shall cancel the process and proceed to re-auction where no bids is received or auction is considered non-competitive due to lack of adequate participation. Then he might cancel it okay important where an appeal has been filed to the appellate authority the proceeding for recovery of penalty under this rule shall be deemed to have been stayed but it will not apply to perishable or hazardous goods only these two are excluded in last point not those which depreciate in value be careful now if you have filed an appeal then in that case those goods will not be sold the proceedings will be stayed my question to you is for filing an appeal are you required to make some pre-deposit the answer is yes remember that point first level appeal 25 percent of the penalty payable you have to deposit as a pre-deposit at first level anyways i'm just writing it here we had already learnt it there clear we are left with only two to three small areas let's cover that now now you'll come to page 239 page 239 uh, page 239 you'll mark this third point is the amendment 
is it sir yes power to call for information earlier the name of section was different is it sir the name has changed the entire provision the entire reasoning has changed earlier it was called as power to collect statistics where officer could collect statistics from gst network or anywhere else from any person as well and try to see based on that statistics who is trying to evade tax and use it for other administrative purposes but now this section is called as power to call information and people this information can be called upon by proper officers from any person who is concerned on that particular case and the information which department has got they can start proceedings however can they display that information of individual return in general public that is bar on specific disclosure that is even now same so what is the provision department officers can call for information of any particular case or any particular form of gst compliance based on that they can start proceedings after giving an opportunity to be heard to the person concerned let's have a look the commissioner or officer authorized by him may by order direct any person very wide to furnish information relating to any matter very wide with to be dealt with in connection with the act within such time and in such manner as may be specified can they tell gst network to provide information yes can they tell you to provide information yes can they tell me to provide information yes upon such notification the commissioner or any person authorized by the commissioner may call upon all the concerned person to furnish such information and returns as may be prescribed bar on disclosure of information no information with respect to any matter given for 150 or 151 shall without previous consent in writing of the concerned person be published in such manner to enable any particulars identified as a referring to a particular person if it's a individual gst return information it cannot be displayed in general public unless you have taken an approval of that person ha huh. if you have taken approval of that person then it can be published otherwise it cannot be published and the last one is no such information shall be used for any proceedings under the act without giving an opportunity to be heard to the concerned person you can start the proceedings like you can issue a notice you can issue a audit inquiry gst audit that can be done but first you give him an opportunity to be heard thereafter you can initiate the proceedings earlier on based on statistics this was not allowed now it has become much wider okay now come to page 243 a very small change people in fact only this part is amended entire page remains same people 243 only this page this part you mark has amendment what is the amendment sir earlier You remember National Anti Profiteering Authority. If some businesses are not passing the benefit of input tax credit, or some businesses are not passing the benefit of reduced GST rate to the customer, then National Anti Profiteering Authority can recover that amount from such persons. they can also order that refund it to the such consumers they can also charge penalty they can also cancel the registration of such person now napa was national anti profiteering authority 
had a tenure of four years. This four years has been now made five years. So earlier it was four. From the day it started, it was four. Now it has been extended to five years. Again, it will end in few months. But for your exams, it will not be four. It will be five years. That means is Napa still there in existence? Yes. Sir, the moment Napa goes out of existence, this provision will not apply, sir. Correct. So either I would have made you delete this provision or change the year. In future, maybe this entire provision will get deleted. At present, Napa is still there in existence because its tenure has been increased from 4 to 5. Fine, sir. Ah, one good news. What's the good news, sir? The good news is foreign trade policy 2015 20 has been extended till 31st March 2022. Now, what is the implication of this? The implication of this is the same FTP will be applicable for May 22. But sir, our exams is in November 22. Don't worry, this is further extended till 30th September 2022. That means, see for November 22 exams, cutoff date was 30th April. So we were expecting that a new FTP will be released. But government has extended the old FTP till 30th September 22, which means same FTP will be applicable even for November 22 exams. So I'll just make you make some date changes here. Balance, you can continue reading the foreign trade policy. Uh, page 323, it was earlier 31st March 22. You can now write 30th September 22. Same FTP, sir. Yes. Then page 327, this is an important change. See, advance authorization, the scheme is valid till 30th September. But the IGST and compensation cess exemption is only till 30th June 22. That means from 1st July, government is planning to impose IGST and compensation cess even if you have advance authorization. Sir, we don't remember advance authorization. You are talking about exemption. I'll give you a background. Advance authorization is a scheme where you can import inputs without payment of custom duty. And do you agree that custom duty includes basic custom duty, social welfare surcharge, anti-dumping duty, IGST, compensation says now the exemption was for all this. IGST and compensation says exemption will end on 30th June. That means after 30th June, if you bring something from outside India, even with advance authorization, you will still have to pay IGST and compensation says. All other things you don't have to pay, but IGST and compensation says will still be applicable. 30th June 22. Fine, sir. Same thing has been done for page 335. Come to page 335. This is the amendment. Even for EPCG license. Sir, what is EPCG license? Export promotion capital goods. You can import capital goods without custom duty. That is still there. But IGST and compensation says exemption will end on 30th June. That means IGST and compensation says will have to be paid. Is it sir? Yes. Okay. So here 
we come to an end of amendments which are directly related to those pages sir amendments have not yet completed people one last three pages left these certain amendments na i couldn't cover it on that specific page so what i have done is for those amendments this small three page notice that that's it only three pages and if you see this heading certain amendments for november 22 other amendments marked in textbook we have already completed doing that we have already marked other amendments in textbook now we are left out only with some small amendments now small yet significant good for you but for the industry it is causing a lot of difficulty let me give you a background supplier furnishes gstr1 people the moment supplier furnishes gstr1 na the recipient if he is a registered person can view in gstr to be agreed people supplier furnishes gstr1 the recipient can view it in gstr to be now say suppose supplier does not furnish that particular invoice or debit note then what will happen if the supplier furnishes invoice and debit note you will get the credit if he does not furnish then there was one rule 364 that itc on invoices not furnished by the supplier is restricted to 5% of invoices or debit not furnished by the supplier you remember rule 364 to the extent of 5% margin was given for example if books itc is 100 to be itc is 80 you know how much you could take as itc you could take 80 plus 5% of 80 that is 84 this was rule 364 obviously subject to maximum of books 100 in books to be 80 you could take 84 credit now government has modified now you can take 80 oh they have made it simple sir they have made it very simple and what is that simple sir so now if your supplier has not furnished gstr1 invoice or debit note then in that case you will not get itc for such invoices that means now recipients will keep calling this please furnish the gstr1 with my invoice if you don't furnish my invoice or debit note i will not get itc this is going to be reality and it has already started this happened from 1st jan if invoice is not furnished then recipient will not get itc then he will start calling the other person will furnish it next month after that you will get your itc or oh, next month i'll get itc sir yes so to be is system generated on 14th of each month or quarter and it contains details of all those invoices which were furnished within the due date those invoices will get reflected whatever is furnished after will come in the next month gstr to be so if your supplier does not furnish gstr one on time should you buy from him or you withhold 18% or gst amount and pay him after you get credit some persons are following this in the industry
Now, see, this was a rule. But this rule did not have a backing of a section. So, what did government do, sir? Government added section 16. One condition was added. Let me give you a recall. Earlier, there were four conditions to avail ITC. Now, one more condition has been added. What were the four conditions, sir? You have the invoice. You have received the goods or services. Supplier has paid the tax. You have filed a valid return. You have the invoice. You have received the goods or services. Supplier has paid the tax. You have filed a valid return. Four conditions were there. Now one more condition has been added. What is that one more condition, sir? The invoice or debit note is furnished by the supplier and is this communicated to you in GSTR 2B. Ah, so now this condition has come as part of section 16 and rule 36.4 that 5% is also removed so that both mean the same thing. That means if an invoice or debit note is not furnished in GSTR 1 or IFF of the supplier, you will not get ITC. Clear with this? Let's have a look. Section 16 and Rule 36.4 Conditions to avail ITC. A new condition is added under Section 16 for the purpose of availing ITC. Now, if you want, you can write. Earlier, four conditions were there. Now, five conditions. The details of invoice or debit note has been furnished by the supplier in the statement of outward supply. Statement of outward supply is GSTR1 or IFF, Invoice Furnishing Facility. And such details have been communicated to the recipient of such invoice or debit note in the manner specified in section 37. Further, rule 36.4 is amended and now 5% relief is removed. Oh, is it, sir? Yes. Now, you can't do 80 plus 5%, 84, 9. If 100 books, 80 GSTR to be, you can take 80 rupees. A registered person shall be able to avail ITC in respect of only those invoices or debit notes which have been furnished by the supplier in statement of outward supply in GSTR 1 or IFF and details are communicated in GSTR 2B. Okay. And as I told you, Aadhaar authentication is mandatory for revocation application. Why? Why? Which revocation? Revocation of cancellation and refund application. Let's see. Newly inserted Rule 10B making Aadhaar authentication mandatory for registered persons for filing application for revocation and refund application. For these two applications, Aadhaar is mandatory. If Aadhaar is not assigned to a person, that such person has to furnish Aadhaar enrollment ID. Ah, you have to furnish Aadhaar enrollment ID and bank passbook with photograph or voter ID passport driving license. Thereafter, Aadhaar has to be authenticated within 30 days of allotment of Aadhaar number. Once you get the Aadhaar number, then within 30 days authenticate Aadhaar. Otherwise, we will not allow you to file refund application and revocation application. Okay. One small change in dynamic QR code. What is dynamic QR code, sir? On B2C invoices, there will be a dynamic QR code and it is required to be put by businesses whose turnover was more than 500 crores in any preceding financial year starting from 1718. Now, see, for dynamic QR code, 
CBIC had given various clarifications. They have changed one clarification, which is regarding outside India transaction. I'll give you a background. Say, suppose receiver is outside India. Receiver is outside India. Place of supply is in India. Sir, is it possible that receiver is outside India and place of supply is in India? Yes, it is possible. When is it possible, sir? Immobile property is in India, but the rent is being paid by the person outside India. Place of supply will be India. The question was whether dynamic QR code is required for such cases where the person receiver is outside India. He is paying for an exchange, but place of supply is in India. People please understand if place of supply is in India, it is not an export transaction. So the question was if it is not an export transaction, then in that case, see export transaction, no need of dynamic QR code but for this case is dynamic QR code required as I told you what is the benefit of dynamic QR code a person can scan and pay through that dynamic QR code do you expect the person outside India who is paying foreign exchange through RBI permitted routes through banking channel will he scan and pay no sir Government has said not required whenever the invoice is issued for outside India transaction whether you receive convertible foreign exchange or Indian rupees were permitted by RBI dynamic QR code is not required. Sir Indian rupees RBI permits yes say suppose it's a Nepal transaction then you will prefer Indian rupees than Nepali currency say suppose there is a US transaction. We will prefer dollars instead of INR. So in some cases RBI permits Indian rupee as well. So in such cases no need to mention dynamic QR code. Okay. Ah, again very important. I think one and then two. Only two circulars left. Both are very important. Simple questions refund the time limit is two years agreed people the time limit to file refund application is two years from the relevant date the first question which industry asked is is this two year applicable to money lying in e-cash ledger cbic has clarified that two years will not be applicable for money lying in e-cash ledger welcome amendment because e-cash ledger it's your own money and you can file refund application whenever you want now the money which is lying in e-cash ledger will the principle of unjust enrichment be applicable should i prove that it is my money the answer is unjust enrichment will not be applicable in such cases. Sir, what is unjust enrichment, sir? Let me give you an example. People, I ordered a pizza and paid for it. It got delivered to you. Will you have it? I know. You will be saying yes. Correct, correct, correct. Sir, pizza, yes, sir. Now that is called as unjust enrichment. You have unjustly enriched yourself with a pizza where I had made the payment. Similarly, in taxation law, indirect tax, government believes that we collect indirect tax from our customers. And that's why we should not get the refund. Because if we get the refund, we will unjustly enrich ourselves because customer has paid the tax. Here, e-cash ledger, you yourself deposit. Government has said, no need to check unjust enrichment, no need to apply two years. Now, one more point was, 
what about refund of tds tcs which is lying in my ecash ledger can i claim that let me tell you some department officers were not giving refund on this saying that this is tds tcs are but tds tcs is also as good as deposit in ecash ledger i will show you one example sir we don't remember tds no problem let me show you now supplier is supplying to recipient and recipient is government department see government wanted to track government contracts so what they said is say suppose you have charged 100 plus gst of 18 total 118 government told its departments and public sector undertakings that they will pay 116 to the other person hey sir 2 rupees 2 rupees will be tds and this 2 rupees will be paid by government department to government tax deducted at source so government departments will deduct 2 rupees from this 100 rupees and pay it to government sir then supplier has received less money na don't worry this 2 rupees supplier can get it in his e cash ledger by filing a online form the moment he files this online form supplier will get this 2 rupees in his e cash ledger now money lying in e cash ledger you can use it to pay your liability yes sir we can use it can you claim refund of this cbic has clarified yes you can claim a refund of this is it sir yes obviously because this is as good as money lying in e cash ledger same way tcs works tcs is collected by e commerce operator for goods sold through e commerce operator for services provided through e commerce operator except 95 but 95 to eco will only pay the tax na okay great now let's see let's see the point the amount deducted or collected as tds tcs under the provisions of section 51 or 52 of cgst act and credited to e cash ledger of registered person is equivalent to cash deposited people this is the key point government has clearly said that it is equivalent to i depositing cash it is not mandatory to utilize such amount for discharging tax liability the registered person is at full liberty to discharge his tax liability for supplies made by him during the tax period either through e credit or e cash and any amount which remains unutilized in e cash ledger can be refunded as excess balance in e cash is it sir yes you can claim a refund of this amount without any hassles okay now we will there was a discussion of deemed exports what is deemed exports sir say suppose mr a is supplying to a eou export oriented unit or to a person having advance authorization or epcg holder or against advance authorization gold being supplied to psu these are deemed exports deemed export there is a choice given collect and pay don't collect and pay from pocket meaning sir i'll show you see the first option is you will collect the tax from eou and pay it who will get refund in such cases one second sir 
if supplier is collecting tax and paying it to government then eou has borne the tax eou can claim refund correct if you don't collect from eou and pay from pocket then mr a can claim refund because he has paid from pocket now that means can i say deemed export refund can be claimed either by the supplier or by the recipient yes in case of deemed exports the refund can be claimed either by the supplier or by the recipient choice is given to the parties concerned now in such cases i have a question for you and that question is the time limit was 2 years from date of gst return of the concerned period this was the time limit 2 years 2 years from the date of concerned gst return whose return supplier's return or recipient's return this was the confusion see you get time limit of 2 years from the date of gst return but the law did not mention 2 years from where now it has been clarified and government has said that 2 years from gst return will always be supplier's return irrespective of who is claiming the refund it will always be supplier's return let's have a look at the provision see this carefully in case refund application is filed for deemed export the relevant date for the purpose of filing refund claim for refund of taxes paid would be date of filing return related to such supplies by the supplier circle this is the keyword irrespective of whether the refund is claimed by supplier or recipient so 2 years limit will count from the date of filing return of such supply by the supplier clear with this okay and with this we come to the last circular issued by cbic which is simple for the fact that it is for restaurant service oh is it sir yes you remember we just discussed some time back restaurant service who will be responsible to pay the tax sir if restaurant service is supplied through e-commerce operator then e-commerce operator is required to pay the tax cbic has given various clarifications on this front let's have a look at it let's see now i will ask you a question you think about it will e-commerce operator have to take a separate registration to discharge 95 taxes will e-commerce operator be required to take a separate registration to discharge 95 taxes cbic has said no in your normal registration you can discharge 95 taxes let's see ecos are already registered as suppliers for their own goods or services there would be no requirement of taking separate registration by eco for payment of tax on restaurant service under 95 no need to take separate registration sir no need to pay now second question unregistered restaurant should eco pay tax sir restaurant is unregistered obviously sir let's see eco will be liable to pay tax on any restaurant service supplied through them including by an unregistered person but remember that point a huh? specified premise you remember taj hotel within that there is a restaurant there restaurant will pay okay third question let me see if you answer correctly or if you think correctly 
restaurant supplying through eco it will be turnover of eco or restaurant restaurant supplying through eco turnover of eco or restaurant winning answer is restaurant let's see the aggregate turnover of a person supplying restaurant service through eco shall include aggregate value of supplies made by restaurant through eco so it will be included in the turnover of restaurant accordingly the person providing restaurant service through eco shall include such services in his aggregate turnover sir why is it useful see restaurant might be doing some other things also like supplying certain goods directly that they have to pay under forward charge only restaurant service is covered under 95 okay supplies of restaurant service made through eco is not inward supply for eco do you agree that supplies through eco is not purchases for eco yes it is not purchases for eco since eco is not the recipient of services supplied through them accordingly since these are not input services these are not to be reported as inward supply under 3b obviously na people why will you report it as inward supply okay okay now one important question was can eco use its input tax credit to pay 95 taxes think about it ha huh? can eco use its input tax credit to pay 95 is it a supply by eco the answer is no it is not a supply by eco this has to be paid through e cash plus this is not a exempt supply for eco it will not lead to any itc reversal people you remember this e by f calculation which we used to do tell me is this supply through eco is it a exempt supply for e-commerce operator it is not turnover of e-commerce operator because it is turnover of restaurant person let's see ecos provide their own service as an electronic platform and an intermediary for which it would require input and input services on which eco avails itc the eco charges commission for its services itc is utilized by eco for payment of gst on its own account the situation remains unchanged even now whatever they were doing earlier for their books it remains same and eco would be eligible for itc as before accordingly it is clarified that eco shall not be required to reverse itc for restaurant service where it is paying tax under 95 no need to reverse itc related to restaurant service because you will also find though it's not there for your syllabus 5% restaurant rate has a condition that itc will not be available but eco is not providing restaurant service it is the restaurant which is providing this service eco is not required to do any reversal it may be noted that restaurant service eco shall pay entire liability in cash that is itc cannot be used for this payment he has to pay everything through e cash important okay people what about supplies not notified under 95 who will pay the tax sir simple if it is not notified by 95 supplied through eco then liability to pay gst continues on the supplier and eco will pay tcs for such supplies is it sir yes see either there will be 95 where eco is paying the tax or eco will collect tcs 1% eco will collect tcs and that tcs will get reflected in e cash ledger of the supplier after filing a form 
ओके हाँ सी दिस वेर रेस्टोरेंट इज प्रोवाइडिंग रेस्टोरेंट सर्विस एंड अदर गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस थ्रू इको इन दिस एम ऑर्डर हु विल इशू दी इन वॉइस इट इज एडवाइजेबल गवर्नमेंट इज मेन्शन एडवाइजेबल दैट इको रेजेस अ सेपरेट बिल फॉर रेस्टोरेंट सर्विस से सपोज अ रेस्टोरेंट इज सप्लाइंग रेस्टोरेंट सर्विस एंड विथ दैट दे आर ऑल्सो सेलिंग वन लेस पैकेट on that lays packet who has to pay the supplier should eco make a separate bill for restaurant service the answer is yes for restaurant service eco will make the bill for main thing the supplier will make the bill the invoice for restaurant service supplied through eco will be issued by eco because eco is liable to discharge tax for this transaction हा रिपोर्टिंग रिक्वायरमेंट पीपल वेर विल इट बी रिपोर्टेड गवर्नमेंट एज सेट फॉर द टाइम बीइंग सी इको एंड रेस्टोरेंट इफ रेस्टोरेंट इज अनरजिस्टर्ड नो प्रॉब्लम बट इफ रेस्टोरेंट इज रजिस्टर्ड दैट मींस दे प्रोवाइड समथिंग एल्स एज वेल एंड से सम पीपल विल कम देयर एंड ईट सो फॉर सच केसेस रेस्टोरेंट इज ओनली लायबल टू पे now who should report it where eco will report it as taxable supply in gstr 1 and 3b and restaurant will report it as exempt supply in gstr 1 and 3b this is what is the advice given by government in fact in this advice now i find one point very funny one turnover is being reported at two gst returns we are inflating our turnovers i mean so for entire india we are trying to increase because something which is supplied through eco government has said report it at two places eco will report it as taxable supply under gstr 1 and 3b restaurant if it is registered it will report such supplies in exempt supply in 1 and 3b this is for supplies through eco restaurant supplies through eco gets reported at two places let's see this eco on services notified under 95 including restaurant service may continue to pay gst and furnish the details in 1 and 3b as outward taxable supply for the time being and registered person supplying restaurant service through eco will report this as exempt supply that means one turnover is being reported two times that's what the provision has provided so this is where we come to an end of amendments wish you all the best for your exams study well